Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl Tay, and I'm here for a Black Ink Crew Chicago Review Season 1, Episode 3. So, we, um, we start off the episode with Charmaine, Danielle, and, um, what's the girl name? Oh, yeah, Kat, talking or whatever, um, about what happened the night before, and they, Kat and, um, Danielle was basically telling Charmaine about how drunk she was and everything, and Danielle was like, I mean, not Danielle, Lord, Charmaine was like, no, like, what? I was like, yeah, bitch, you were drunk, okay? Like, she was dancing, y'all know, she was dancing all up on Dawn and shit after she said that she wasn't going to deal with him no more, this, then third, after she found out about the fact that he's still with his baby's mother, okay? But she was still dancing on him, on him anyway. So they brought that up, and then she doesn't remember, like, having a conversation with Don and, you know, the fact that things had kind of went left in the conversation, um, where Don had tried to say that, basically he was trying to say, bitch, you knew I was still with my baby mama, and Charmaine was like, no, I didn't, no, I didn't, da, da, this, then third, so... Um, so she said she was going to have a conversation with him. I guess, you know, being now that she's sober and everything. We'll have another conversation with him, I should say. Being that she's sober and everything. So moving on from that, we get to, uh, Ryan with his family and everything. And they're talking about the fact that, um, his baby's mom, um, and the kids are, um, and his kids are going to be moving or whatever, I think. To, was it to LA or not necessarily was somewhere in California not necessarily LA but I believe it was somewhere in California that she plans on moving to because she you know got a job opportunity and everything and you know he's talking to his family about it and they're basically just trying to support him and make sure he's okay with the decision and he's you know he was explaining how his dad um, was his primary caretaker and how his mom wasn't really around like that and you know he just kind of, he still kind of, it seems like he's coming around with the whole idea of his kids being in a different state, but he's still kind of like, he just doesn't want it to be like how he was growing up, you know, just having, just mainly one of his parents. So, um, that was a good scene, you know, to see his family giving him support in this situation, um, situation, um, we get to Four and Ryan, and Four is talking about um, his music career and everything, and how, you know, push come to shove, if he has to leave a uh, 9 Mag, then that's what it is, you know, and I guess he's been doing this music thing since sometime in high school or whatever, so... Um, yeah, moving on from that, we get to Char Charmaine and Don, where they're talking about the night before, and basically it's the same motherfucking conversation, it's just that this time they're both sober. At least I presume. Because, uh, yeah. Don, he got, some, he got some serious anger issues, you know? They was talking about it or whatever, and she basically was saying the same thing she said the night before. Like, bitch, I know that you and your baby mama were still together the way you presented it to me. Y'all wasn't. And he was like, I told you, I do. I told you, I told you, this, that, and third. Basically the same, you know, same thing from the night before or whatever. And he started punching the foot. Like, he punched the fucking wall. Like, he was like, this fucking close to her when he punched the fucking wall i said this nigga here i was scared for charmaine to be quite honest with you because something is wrong with that nigga like he really got some anger issues that he needs to like you need to get it together because you didn't tell that girl that you and your baby mom were still together you made it seem like as if y'all weren't and trying to get the nerve to sit up here and um, say that she tried to make herself seem like less of a hoe. Okay. Charmaine, yeah, you did kind of, kind of come off hoeish these first two episodes. I, I will say that. I mean, despite the fact that you didn't know, it's just a simple fact that you let a nigga fuck you in the bathroom. And y'all 
have it. Y'all not even in a relationship. And then on top of that, even if y'all was in a relationship, the only way I would find this acceptable is if you was with the nigga for a long time or if y'all were actually married. You know, to spice shit up in the relationship or the marriage. But that's the only time I would find that to be acceptable. But just fucking a nigga in the bathroom and y'all don't have nothing really, that, that does come off a little... A little thottish, you know. But, um, Don, don't sit up here and act like as if you wasn't all up on her while you sitting up here trying to call her a thought and shit. Like, I can't stand niggas that do that, you know. But moving on from that, um, we, um, get to see Van's, um, daughter, um, Brianna. And, um, he's saying how, you know... Charmaine and Kat are bad influences, you know, joking around, whatever, whatever. And, um, then we get to see one of Van's clients, and she wants a, um, tattoo of her, um, of, of some roses or whatever for, you know, in honor of her grandmother, because her grandmother used to plant roses outside of her house. Okay, cool. Um, and so as he's doing the tattoo, he starts reflecting on his life, talking about, you know, how his dad passed. When he was seven years old, how he, you know, was a gangbanger and everything. And, you know, um, he was just talking about how, you know, he had to steal things to provide for his family before he had got a job at Nine Mag. So, and, um, I like Van. He seems, so far I like him. He seems like a really likable person. And, um, he seems like he really does care about his daughter. And, um, well, I'm gonna say that. For later, I was about to say something else, but I'm going to save that for a little later on in the video. Um, moving on from that, we have uh, four in the studio. And Kat and Char, you know, pops up and, you know, they talk and have a conversation saying, uh, saying something about him being the next Jay-Z. I said, hold the fuck up. No. Don't, no, let's not compare him to somebody like Jay-Z. No. I'm, I'm sorry. Mm-mm. No. And I, and I really like Jay-Z. Like, I like a lot of his music. Especially, like, you know, his old music back in the day. So, yeah, I, yeah. I'm sorry. No. Mm-mm. Moving on. Um, so, Kat and, um, Ford, they're getting a little, you know, mm, in the studio or whatever. So... Charmaine decides to leave. Okay, cool. So, um, Kat and, um, what's his name? I had to say his name, didn't I? Kat and Four. They, you know, playing around in the studio or whatever, joking around and everything. And, you know, then he starts to pour his heart out to her about, you know, how he's been through things and she's been through things and, he just wants to prove to her that, you know, he's serious about what he's saying. And, um, you know, Kat is kind of reserved on the whole idea, but she, you know, she decides to, um, meet up with him on Friday to, um, you know, get a closer eye view of him outside of the shop. Um, and then we get the scene with, um, Don and, uh, Four and uh, Don's homeboy comes in to get a tattoo, and um, I guess he played basketball. I guess Don played basketball with um, this guy. I forget his name. I didn't write it down. I'm sorry, but um, he says that he wants a slave with the heart of a king um, tattoo. Um, and by the way, Four is going to be doing that tattoo for um don's homeboy um so then don starts reminiscing about how he could have potentially had an nba career how you know him being in the streets him being a gangbanger is what caused him to you know lose all of that and you know i know it, it, it and it is hard when you go through um, go through that being a felon and everything, it is hard to, you know, get a lot of opportunities. I mean, hell, it's hard nowadays to get a job, period. For real, for real. But it's extra hard when you're a felon. Extra hard. 
you know, so, um, and he's also talking about, like, basically, talk, basically, you could say he has trust issues because I guess some girl he was dating at the time, um, betrayed him and everything and, you know, caused him to do some of the shit that he did. Um, they caused him to get a record, you know, so... Moving on from that, we got Cat and Forrest Date. Now, um, sorry, I dropped my pen, but um, Forrest, he's trying to be kind of romantic and everything candles, the flowers. He brought some, um, he ordered some food from somewhere to try to act like he cooked the shit. Like, really? This is this 2015. We still pretending like motherfuckers to cook some shit. If you would just sit up here and say, look, I got it from such and such place, from farm fresh down the motherfucking street. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, oh, wait a minute. Hold up. Farm fresh. They, yeah, never mind. They ain't, that's not a carry out place. But that's the first thing I thought of. Y'all don't, y'all don't judge me. I'm just, you know. Yeah. My bad. I couldn't think of nothing else at the time farm fresh for some reason the first thing that came to my mind but yeah well he could have still got something already made from farm fresh i'm just saying you know some you know had farm fresh be having chicken already made and shit you know i'm just saying yeah move yeah let's move on from that point or whatever um <laughs> but um yeah so cat comes over and you know, he's trying to say that he, like I said, he's trying to say that he cooked the food. Cat calls his bluff or whatever and was like, you ain't cooked this shit or whatever. And he's really trying to convince her that he cooked the shit. And, um, they start, you know, getting into a deep conversation and everything. And, well, no, he kind of makes a move on her trying to kiss her and stuff. And she's kind of like, you know, reluctant to kiss him and everything and you know he's not trying to pressure her too much into anything else and so that's when they start having um the serious conversation and um that's when she pretty much reveals that reveals that she you know is not ready for a relationship and it's kind of like she got scared y'all that's what it is she got scared um She's confused about what she really wants right now. Because you, you could tell she likes four. She does. But she, she's been hurt in the past. And she's scared to go down that road again. And I get it. Because, you know, I mean, I've been hurt. I've been hurt. And I'm at a place right now where I'm stuck between wanting a relationship and just being by myself. You know what I'm saying? But until I figure out what I really want, I just, I don't even try to go there with dudes dudes right now because i know that i'm not ready i'm not ready for nothing right now i'm just i'm trying to get back to a place where i find out what makes me happy i'm trying to get back to a place where i am genuinely happy and i don't have to like you know put on a front i can you know i can honestly say i am happy you know and I'm trying to get back to that place. But I'm getting there, though. And I'm getting there one way or another. And Kat, I hope she, you know, does the same. Because she seems like a sweet girl. I mean, so far, you know, she seems like she's a sweet girl. And she really seems like that she, you know, is serious about, you know, she takes relationships very seriously. You know what I'm saying? But, um, it's like... Nowadays, nowadays, it's so hard to find somebody that's really genuine, that's going to really be about you because people like to really play games, especially people in my generation, you know, the 90s babies or whatever. Like, everybody either think they're getting played or they're really playing somebody. You know what I'm saying? It's just, and it's a lot of insecure shit in, our, in, in, in my generation and just, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to sit up here and start preaching today, you know. I'm, I'm not going to do it. Because, um, yeah, I could go on and on and on all day long. So, yeah, um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, moving on from that, you know, we see Van, um, 
in his lawyer's office and as we see he's still having some legal troubles um i guess he had a uh something about him having a pistol um or whatever you know carrying a legal weapon around pretty much and um you know, according to him, you know, he said in the last shop he was in, he, you know, had it for protection because he got robbed, you know, he got, he had got robbed. So he, uh, he, he, he brought a gun, you know, for protection and everything. And, um, his lawyer is telling him that he could serve 18 months in prison behind this and van he's feeling frustrated he feels like his lawyer is not fighting for him and yada 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 and i understand you know i mean i can't say i i understand because i've never been in this situation before but i can empathize with him because i can only imagine how hard it is already being a felon and then on top of that you can't catch a break for you know carrying a pistol around for protection and then on top of that, him having, you know, him having his daughter, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, even though his daughter, you know, she's like, I guess you could say like teenager or whatever, but still, you know, it's just the, it's just the principle, you know what I'm saying? He's going to be away from her and everything if he has to serve this time. So, um, I really, I really hope that, um... I really hope he can beat this case, his lawyer does. I really hope his lawyer fights for him and does everything that he possibly can for Van. Because like I said, it seems like a lot of his past actions is, is just really coming back to haunt him and everything. And I hope he catches a break because he seems like he's, you know, matured and got older, you know. So I'm just, I'm just hoping for the best outcome possible for him. Um, we get the four show. Um, I don't know how to really critique his song, cause I just, I don't know. I don't know how I feel, you know how like you listen to a song and you don't really know how you feel about it? This is how I feel with him. And maybe, because maybe I need to like actually listen to the song instead of seeing it performed and then, you know, give a solid opinion on it but um it don't really seem like that many people was interested in it not trying i ain't trying to throw, i ain't trying to throw no shade i ain't i'm just saying like i was looking in the audience and like once the performance was over it seemed like the only people that was really kind of like cheering him on was like people that were his friends you know or you know people that he worked with or whatever like the rest of the crowd seemed like they was just standing there, kind of smiling, like, <laughs> yeah, you know. But I mean, I'm just saying that that's just how it looked to me. It didn't seem like, yeah. Um, <clears throat> um. <laughs> so we um. Oh, okay. Let's just fast forward a little bit. So we get to Ashley confronting um confronting Charmaine about exactly what has taken place between her and Dawn. And so you know, Charmaine she she tells her like she was like, you know, um we uh what did she say to her? She said something to her, but it was basically telling her that um they that they fucked like Ashley was saying like what do you what do you mean y'all such and such bitch they saying they fucked that's what the fuck she's saying I mean how how much more could I mean I mean the bitch probably didn't really want to say flat out that they fucked but I mean shit you pushed her to say it straight up like that so after a while that's what Charmaine had to say she was like we fucked and that's when. Ashley start coming for her and everything. Now, see, this is what pisses me off. First of all, Ashley, why is you coming for Charmaine? And you sitting up here talking about some, oh, like she really thought she was going to sit up here and tell me she fucked my man. Da, 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 da. Let me tell you one thing, bitch. He ain't yours because if he was, he wouldn't be sitting up here doing this shit. Fucking this bitch and that bitch and whoever else. He's not yours, okay? 
And I'm gonna need for you to get that through your fucking head. Why are you sitting up here coming for Charmaine like as if Charmaine owes you some loyalty? And she kept her, and she told you what the fuck you wanted to hear. So how you gonna sit up here and say, she really thought like she was gonna tell me she my man and I was gonna be cool with that? Um, bitch, you asked her and she told you. Then you get mad when she tells you? What the fuck? You, like what? Girl, if you don't sit your ass down somewhere, you better. Like, you sitting up here punching, like, my, personally, if it was me, my black ass would be going right straight. Through. Like, as soon as Charmaine would have told me that information, I would have been carrying my ass straight to dawn, and we would have been scrapping. It, it, it just would have been a ball out fall out. I know I would have lost, because, you, you know, I see how small I am. It just would have been a ball out fall out. Straight up. I'm not going to sit up here and fight her. For what? This nigga the one who owe you loyalty at the end of the fucking day. Like, I'm going to sit up here and I'm going to fight him. And then, I, then I'm going to be done with him. That's But that's just me, though. That's just me. She going to sit up here and then she going to sit up here and confront him or whatever. Doing all this hollering or whatever. And, of course, Dawn goes into his, you know, ragey mode and starts throwing shit and starts flipping out. Like, take this bitches away from me. Take this bitches away from me. For me, like, I was like, nigga, is you possessed by the devil? I'm, I'm like, the fuck is wrong with this nigga? Like, every time I turn around, he's going off, y'all. Like, first of all, I don't even understand why you going off, Don, because you the one who created this whole tomfoolery, okay? How you gonna sit up here and go off when you the one who created this whole situation? You on sitting up here fucking other bitches, you wouldn't have these kind of problems. Like, fuck out of here. You, you sit up here always trying to turn shit around. Like, see, Don is a manipulator. Because he always sits up here and tries to turn some shit around on somebody else. Just like, you know, earlier in the episode when he tried to say to um, Charmaine that she knew from Jump Street that he was still with his baby mama. No, the fuck she didn't. Like, and he really, like, he'll really sit up here and try to convince you and really manipulate you and, and, and turn shit around on you. And I can't stand motherfuckers like that. No, bitch. Own up to your shit because you were wrong. You the one who sat up here and tried to act like you and your baby mama wasn't together. You the one who sat up here and led Charmaine on to believe y'all was going to have something. You the one, like I said, you the one who created this whole situation and then you get mad when shit hits the motherfucking fan. Like, really? And, th and then on top of that, you ruined your brother's fucking night. That shit was about him. But, I mean, I'm not going to say it was completely you because Ashley came up in there where she's the one who came up in there confronting him about it as soon as she found out about the shit. You know what I'm saying? So, she's to blame too. But, Dawn just really took that shit to a whole nother motherfucking level that it didn't have to be taken to at all. Like, but anyways, y'all, that's my review on Black Ink Crew Season 1, Episode 3. And uh, follow me on all social media. I put it. I put what social media that I'm on in the bottom, uh, in the description box below. And make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And I love you guys. Mwah.